Hey, what's up, guys? This is Jorge Cuero. Make sure you're liking, commenting, and subscribing. And don't forget to smack that notification bell so you're up to date with everything that we do. Party Nerds, go! You're listening to Party Nerds Weekly. What's going on, everybody? Party Nerds in the <laughs> Guys, oh my goodness, this... <laughs> Let me just get right to it real quick before we introduce the guest. How awesome was this episode of Mandalorian? I don't care what we're talking about. Grand Admiral motherfucking Thrall. Matter of fact, Bunny was so excited. You couldn't even hear her. You just saw it was so high pitched. So guys, uh, <laughs> this week we have a good friend of the party nerds. Uh, she's always been with us from the get. Uh, Bunny, Bunny Mike Game You, the gamer. The G, the rapper, this girl does everything. Bunny, so happy for you to join us this week. Woo! I'm happy to be here, guys. So, Bunny, you got a lot of stuff going on right now. Obviously, you got the Lost Rings recording with Columbia Records, but what else you got going on? Why don't we break the news down to everybody real quick? Yeah, I'm progressing, and I am moving past just making music with Sony Columbia's Lost Rings. I am now part of the Queen's Gaming Collective, which is a awesome opportunity for the entire world, putting women at the forefront of gaming and entertainment and tech. That is what's up. So now what exactly do you guys do? Like, you know, cause I mean, that sounds so awesome. Like I'm looking forward to it. Well, essentially it's a venture backed women led organization. It's a collective that allows for women in all forms of entertainment in every industry to be able to be at the forefront and not just be profitable, but be equitable. There's been a lot of talk about how great other clans have done, like FaZe Clan or, you know, similar clans. But we've all kind of had the same question in our minds. Why haven't we seen one with women leading at the Mm -hmm. forefront? And so Queen's Gaming is here to solve that problem and change the world for you. Well, we're looking forward to it, Bunny. And by the way, did you guys notice, doesn't Bunny kind of sort of look like Ahsoka Tano? A I was going to say that. I, I was going to say that. <laughs> when, I'm not, when I'm not ashy, you know what I'm saying? When I'm, when I'm, when I'm hydrated and I'm, a, I'm looking like, you know, a joint, definitely well, looking well, Ahsoka. Jorge, can, he, can, he can Photoshop moisture on you. So, Jorge, <laughs> use your patent <laughs> lotion Photoshop. <laughs> So guys, let's talk about this week because obviously um, we've been saying how great this season's been of The Mandalorian, but a couple of things made this week a little extra special. Obviously, Ahsoka Tano, we did know, it wasn't a total surprise because we knew she was coming, but how they, it's kind of funny how I thought like maybe at the end of the episode, you see her. And right from the very beginning, you just saw the lightsabers and I was like, oh shit, like hold up. <laughs> what was your reaction when you first saw the beginning of the episode? It, it was astounding. Like, I thought that I was going to kind of only see Rosaria Dawson since she has a very familiar looking face um, and she's pretty well known. Typically, when somebody of that caliber is in any type of picture, all you see is just immediately them. But I was not drawn in by that. Like, all I thought was Ahsoka so- uh, Katano. She did an amazing job. They stayed true to it. She did a great job playing the character. Um, it fit within the mythos of how she should be behaving at that time. And, uh, you know, it was uh, very interesting, a lot of the things that they put in to foreshadow her return and what's going to be coming forward, like the Mordecai Owl, the Loth Cat, um, and then, of course, her epic name drop that I'm really excited to talk about much later. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Bunny, what was your reaction when you saw her come on the screen? Spoilers or no spoilers, because it's still Oh, spoilers. This is all spoilers. Oh, well, F that. (laughs) It was just such a welcome change. I mean, you guys know, we've been dealing with a season plus of Mando getting not his ass handed to him, but kind of like a lot of snake shit going down. And I just, it was a welcome change to see an ally. I mean, there's a few allies here and there that don't try to, you know, be, be snaky with them. But this is the first true ally that I felt like not only had his back, but understood Baby Yoda. No snake activity, straight partnership. And it's just, I, I, I saw a piece of myself. I was like, wait a minute. Is that my sister? <laughs> <laughs> it was like it you were looking in the mirror. <laughs> Yeah, I was so excited. I mean, he, he's definitely 
got uh, a friend in Ahsoka and moving forward, I'd like to see more of her. Like you were saying, Bravos, it goes right along with the way that she should be in this part of the mythos. And I'm looking forward to the next, you know what I mean? Hey, you know, another thing that's super exciting about this season, again, uh, unlike the, you know, the past couple movies, you, you have someone like Dave Filoni, he directed this, you know, obviously past two seasons, they will put it into a, uh, different people's hands, but he was like, I'm taking this one because I know when we introduce the Jedi's, it has to be done right. And Dave Filoni, just like John Favreau, they, they understand the mythos of Star Wars. So it, it's just so comforting to see something done right where I'm not looking at it like, nah, that, see, Ahsoka wouldn't do that. Like literally, you see memes going out, you see Ahsoka and her and her stance and all. Remember that one scene you saw the two things and her lightsaber is lit up behind? I was like, ooh. <laughs> things that I think that they've done like a very very good job is you know obviously we mentioned before how they do fan service very well um but also every little plot point that they tease and foreshadow and everything like that can have both a very obvious direction and then a bigger wider implication into the universe itself so they talk about how uh now they're going to take him to Tython and that a Jedi will reach out to him or a Sith will reach out to him Surprise, because of uh, the Force. Now, Luke at this time is rebuilding the Jedi Temple. Um, there's also the implication that, hey, a Sith might reach out. Um, we've also gotten, you know, some spoilers and leaks about how there's going to be a Mace Windu series. Well, I, I, say what again? Then, say uh, what again? I dare you. I dare you, you motherfucker. That. But not only that, one of the things that, you know, again, uh, somebody that pays attention to a lot of the Star Wars mediums that's come out know that Asaka is very tied with this thing called the world between worlds which is kind of like Star Wars's way of mixing with time travel without creating plot holes because uh, you can only like pull somebody in, at, in certain directions. One of the interesting things when they talk about Grogu now is they said that- You said uh, Goku, somebody, like Dragon Ball Z? Goku? Yeah. Aww, <laughs> <God damn. laughs> Pulled him from the temple he <laughs> says that, oh, he experienced a lot of darkness. The world between worlds looks like dark space with bridges everywhere. And one of the characters that's implicated with the name drop of Thrawn is Ezra from Ooh, uh, Rebels. Rebels, who would be in the world between worlds if he was going to be saved by Asaka at one point. Because where they leave off with Ezra and Thrawn, it's totally possible for one of them to be pulled into the world between worlds for them to be saved. So now, Bravo, let me ask you a question because uh, I read an article even before this episode a couple of weeks ago saying how the world between worlds and how Rebels actually opened the door for uh, alternate universes and time travel. So mm -hmm. technically, could you like foresee in the future where they maybe took the movies that were just done uh, by Ryan Johnson and maybe just say that was like another alternate reality? Oh, Can we actually... We I, I, listen, I think, I think Disney as a company, like, listen, I would love for that to happen, honestly. <laughs> you feel but me? I think Disney as a company, what they would more likely do is do a what if series. Well, that's original, Marvel. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen all the fuck ups of um, Fox's uh, X Men, you know, when they try to go back oh. in time and all that. And that's why wow. I'm afraid if they do that. Yeah. We were just talking about that last night. We had a watch party. I don't know if you guys ever want to join us. We do watch parties all the time over at the Discord. And you know the party nerds are always down to come down to the parties and we're always welcoming you guys. It doesn't matter where, when we are, come through. We were talking about how the, the way Fox has been messing it up, we've been saying it's like you can't really feel, you got fake news. You get fake everything else. It's just a fuck up after fuck up after fuck up. And it's like it right, reminds me of the magistrate's little minion in the episode, spoiler alert, that moment where Ashoka, is, where Ashoka is like behind Mando and he looks at them and he realizes, and that was the moment where he knew he, he, he fucked up. up. Like, you didn't ask as many questions as you should have, little minion. You didn't look between the lines. You, you ain't see that coming. And he's just, it's, it's one of those things, like it's definitely a Fox fuck up in a moment. It's like, they, Fox just can't get it right. 
to save their life. Yeah, I mean, you know what? But again, like, if we're talking about the whole time travel, um, mo moving forward, you know, because obviously this episode is great. Obviously, Dave Filoni is doing a great job of incorporating uh, Clone Wars, Rebels, and the whole, the, he's doing a good job of bringing it all together. So, you know, I, honestly, I think at this point now, who you, Bravo, you mentioned earlier, and now's your time to bring in the blue face villain. What is his name? Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now, now, to those who don't know Star Wars, can you please explain to them who he is? Because he might not be super popular because he hasn't really been in the mainstream or represented live yet. Thank you. So Gra Grand Admiral Thrawn was first introduced in the expanded universe, now known as uh, Star Wars Legends. Um, it, that's no longer canonical, but it was uh, a series of novels that came out after Return of the Jedi. And he was the highest ranking member in the Imperial Navy who since the uh, Imperial Empire, or since the Empire was very xenophobic, they didn't like non-human uh, entities. And here is this Chiss, blue skinned, red eyes, and he rose to literally the top. The only people that he had to answer to were the Emperor, and then he was pretty much on equal standing with Grand Moff Tarkin. Um, but uh, he was well known for his like Sherlock Holmes type of deduction skills. One of the things that he was known best for was analyzing the art of a species or a planet to determine where their uh, culture would put the most emphasis to determine where a battle plan would be. So. For example, if a um, if a species very valued head-on uh, war tactics and everything like that, you would be able to see it in the culture that they had because it would play over into other things. If you value uh, straightforward, honorable attacking, he would be like, okay, cool. So I can just flank them and they won't know what's coming. So would he be alive during the time of uh, the Mandalorian? So what happens, uh, if you watch Star Wars Rebels, that's where, um, as far as visual mediums, he first comes in because uh, the original author, Timothy Zahn, wrote a whole tr trilogy that I fully recommend, even to non-Star Wars fans. It's amazing. Um, but he's in Star Wars Rebels, plays like a major part. At the very end, him and the main character, Ezra's ending, is very nebulous because what happens is, they take off into hyperspace by these whales that uh, have a natural ability to do that. Uh, but Wait, like, brother, real quick, not, not to interrupt. So this is in the books, right? No, this is in Star Wars Rebels. In the Rebels, okay, all right. Because I know with books, I'm like, wait, Bravo's reading something besides old 80s Playboys magazines? This is not the Bravo. <laughs> so the... Uh, <laughs> What happens is he flies, they fly forward in hyperspace. And uh, what we already saw in Rebels, like I said, about the world between worlds, there is, you know, a little bit of wiggle room that it's possible that he could be pulled, that Ezra and Thrawn could escape that situation right before it turns cataclysmic for the I'm, two of them. And uh, Jorge, I hope you caught all of that with yeah. Darnell. <laughs> Sorry, I was I thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let me also ask you guys about oh, oh, uh, the whole what Grogu, the or am I saying it right, Grogu? Is that right? Grogu. Yeah. So, like, what, how do you think, like, now that we have a name for him and the fact that Ahsoka saw fear in him, like, where does this take the story now? Like, what, what explain to me why, um, Bunny, why do you think that um, Ahsoka wouldn't train Grogu? Well, you see what happened after the, <laughs> if you think about what happened after the first time that we lost Yoda, Yoda, you have to really, it begs the question, do we want to see the same thing happen again? Do we want another Vader? Do we want that kind of problem? I mean, at best we'll get a gray, but at worst we'll get a dart and she's traumatized. We're all traumatized. They killed the kids. <laughs> So this is, you're saying this is just based on her experience, what she went through, because obviously you guys know if you watch the, um, uh, the Clone Wars that Ahsoka was actually sold out by the Jedi Council. Like they did her dirty. They were pretty much like, no, 
we think you killed X, Y, she didn't do it. And then finally, when they realized they messed up, understandably, she was kind of swole, like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to go back to the Jedi, you know? So did that play a part in it too? Or do you just really think that she saw what happened to Anakin, her uh, master becoming Vader, and she was just like, I'm not taking that chance. And then when they come back, it's like, okay, I'll take the chance. And when they come back, what is she supposed to expect? That's a deep wound. I mean, bravo, chime in here, but I don't think she's gone through all of that to have to go through it again at this point. I, I agree. I think uh, Ahsoka realizes the potential of anybody that's powerful in the Force. She herself is no longer a Jedi. She's um, made that very clear. She doesn't identify as a Jedi. Uh, she doesn't uh, stick with them because when she was a Jedi and they were at their height of power, they lost a lot of their ideals. They were arrogant. They mm -hmm. um, were supposed to acknowledge that feelings are a natural thing, but you're supposed to let the force guide you um, and let nature take its course, essentially. Instead, a lot of them, like Kiata Mundi, turn to sociopathicness. Like, no, mm. like, oh, if somebody died, like, don't care about them. Like, who gives a shit? Like, that's just what happens. People die. Zero accountability. I mean, you name it. Freaking sociopaths. I mean, and, and but, but like for as far as Baby Yoda, obvious, what is he like 50 years old? You know, they implied that he was one of the younglings that got away of uh, during Anakin's grand slaughter. Did you guys see the memes of him hiding behind the couch yeah. <laughs> during the whole slaughter? So uh, understandably now, uh, someone else also mentioned that it's the whole fact that he has an attachment with Mando. Like, how does that play in? Like, how is that, like, what was she, is she saying like, no, I'm not going to train him because he's attached to you and is it maybe because if you pull bait or you know i'm sorry grogu away from mando at this point it can make him bitter is that did the, that play the easiest way it? to the easiest way to connect that with anything that even like the most basic hey i just watched the movie star wars fan would understand is watching episode one again when anakin's standing before the council um you know he says that he's afraid to lose his mother uh, because, you know, he's nine. Like, of course, like, that's what happens. And what does Yoda say to him? Like, oh, I sense much fear in you. And fear leads to suffering. Suffering leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. And hate leads to the dark side. Yep. And you can't have an attachment without fear of loss of that. Like, one of the things that we can see in our real world is Buddhism. The less you are attached to the material world, the more you'll be able to have spiritual like awakeness and be separate from this world. If you're attached to things, you're afraid of losing them. And it, especially when it's people and things like, you know, what happened when Anakin lost his mother? Right. He went on a slaughter. What, <laughs> happened, what happened when he thought he was going to lose his wife and his unborn child? He pretty much sold out the entire galaxy, which if you right. look at it from another standpoint, like what what person would be considered evil if they were like, hey, I want to save my loved ones, even if it comes at the cost of others. It is evil, but there is some understanding that anybody could like feel and uh, become empathetic with that. It's so oh. true. I mean, I want to chime in here. Just the, that order of which original Yoda Yoda, you know, Grogu, who's to say, I mean, Ahsoka has already looked into Grogu. So who's to say, like you're saying, Bravo, you don't have to watch the entire lore. You don't have to read it all. I mean, you should, because God, <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, I just want to speak to people who have watched this episode, maybe with a friend who is a blurred or a nerd. Pay attention to the ending when Rosario, Ahsoka's Rosario, um, looks at Grogu and she nods. And then, he, you know, he walks further into the hull of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the ship, of Mando's ship, and then Razor's Crest. And <laughs> she nods again. She nods again. Right, Bravo? She nods a second time. And mm -hmm. that second nod, spoiler report, it's like, it's an alert right here. That second nod is, Thank you for listening to me because I did not want to be separated from him. Yeah. I mm. felt that. 
I don't know if it's because I'm a mom, <laughs> shouts the mini bunny, but um, she actually said hello. <laughs> but I want for you guys out there to notice and take care, the direction and the production in this episode was very, very mindful to beg the question. Suppose Grogu did not want to train with Ahsoka. Right. And Has anybody asked that? Nonverbal <laughs> communication is such a big thing. Like, you know, Rip David Prost, like for example, James Earl Jones always went uncredited because he felt that David Prost did more for the character of Darth Prost. Vader than he did, which like we have the iconic voice of James Earl Jones, but the nonverbal communication and acting that you see uh, in a character, you know, Mando's another perfect example. We don't see his face. We don't see emotions, but we understand just like Bunny was saying, simple nods and what they could mean. And it was the exact same thing with Baby Yoda, uh, Grogu. We're not seeing a lot of, you know, verbal communication, but those two look backs right. signified everything that we needed to know as where he stood emotionally. And, and let me put that on a grand scale of just this Mandalorian series. One great thing about the series, unlike the, the past movies where special effects, you know, there's like droids flying around, layers like nothing but excitement, stimulation. This series is all about the downtime. And when I say downtime, if you watch the original Star Wars movies back in the 70s, and stuff, there's a scene where you just see C-3PO walking in the desert doing nothing. There's scenes where you just see Luke looking off into the sunset. And it's almost just like those old school Western samurais. And obviously this, this episode, you saw when they had the whole, sh the, you know, the shoot off between him and the guy, you really saw that. But just like you guys are saying, sometimes you don't need the words. You don't need the special effects. Sometimes what speaks louder than anything is rest. Sometimes what speaks louder than any other thing you do is the downtime. And it helps you to take in everything you've just seen and then it makes you more emotionally invested into the series. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. Um, what you call? You guys know at the end credits where they have the the drawings um, of each scene. That's mm -hmm. like yeah. really, like that concept right. art. Yeah, that's awesome. But Who's Darnell, going on uh, what you were saying, I usually tell people uh, to check out the movie The Road. Um, for people that aren't familiar, it's a uh, it started as a novel and it's. Abs absolutely heartbreaking, but it's about post-apocalyptic world and a son and his father. I tell people, watch that. There's barely any speaking parts in it. There's barely any true action. But if you watch that, it's more emotionally harrowing and it'll feel more impactful to you than if you watch something like Transformers, which is full of action. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and and like I said, like this, uh, and just to kind of segue into another rumor, our, our boy Boss Logic put up an image of Sebastian Stan as a 30-year-old uh, Luke Skywalker, which the guy looks just like him. Now, would you, as a Star Wars fan, be like, all right, you guys are taking it too far if they brought in Luke in his, like, 30s? Because technically you can, because old man Luke in, uh, you know, The Force Awakens that's like in another, what, like 30 years or 40 years. But so now this would be like a little bit after Return of the Jedi. You can have like a Sebastian Stan kind of show, maybe maybe a spinoff series of how Luke kind of has to go into seclusion. Or do you think that's too much? Do you guys not want to see that? What, at, what, at what point do we need to just back off and just let these guys do what they're doing? You feel me? I'm down. And, um, and it, 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 it begs the question, where... Would it be? Would it be the thirty or the forty years? Because it, it I mean, if, if it's between now and 30, 40 years, then we got a lot of we got a lot of leeway. We got a lot of time to play with, because that's a good chunk. That's a good chunk of uh, canon right. to, to to juggle. You know what I mean? What do you think, Bravo? I mean, we've got a good amount of time to put a good two, maybe three seasons together if that's the direction we want to go in. Boss Logic shouts to you because I'm down. <laughs> But do I you mean, guys uh, do you guys think that the success of this season, bringing the Clone Wars characters, will open the door for more familiar characters coming to the show like next season, like you just said, because there's a huge time gap. Absolutely. I mean, we've already been told like they're planning parts for season four, let alone season three. Wow. Uh, in introduction of uh, possibly Mace Windu for his whole spinoff series. Um, you know easily they could do ian mcgregor and launch the obi-wan series that they're talking about 
Um, in, in I think that since the Mandalorian has done such a good job with the fan service already, I would trust them to reintroduce those characters. Hell, even if I saw Han, uh, for example, I would be super elated because it could fit in the way that they've been doing the Mandalorian. It's very easy for them to keep picking little parts throughout all these movies and interconnecting everything. We've already seen them connect Clone Wars. We've already seen them collect uh, connect episode seven. We've already seen them connect uh, the original series. Like they're doing such a good job with it that I I'm down for however that they're going to continue to piece these little parts. By the way, um, and I'm Bunny, you're you're a gamer. In the star, the last Star Wars game where they had the kid from Gotham that played the Joker. Um, what was the name of that game on PS4? Fall in Order. Uh, yeah. yeah. So when when did that take place? Can they bring that character in, or is that was that way back? Like, what is when? What's the it's timeline? Too soon. I think it's too soon. We um, you can chime in, Bravo. I feel like this. We're gonna have to. We need a few cycles before we can be able to introduce something like that character. I mean, great character though. Cal, uh, like uh, that that's the character's name. Um, Cal exists between episodes three and four. So, I mean, uh, I think it would be a little bit of a stretch to have him survive all the way past the Empire. Mm. Uh, and, you know, plus, who, who could play him in live action? Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, it would be interesting to see maybe, like, a nod to uh, his exploits or stuff that he's done in Fallen Order 1 or the upcoming Fallen Order 2. But I, I really don't see them putting him as a survivor all the way up until uh, at past episode six. That To me, that would be a bit of a stretch. A stretch. Got it. Yeah. All right. So uh, to, kind of to wrap up, where do you guys see the season going? Like, obviously, you have uh, uh, Giancarlo Esposito's character. You see his outfit now kind of looks like Darth Vader-ish. Like, are, is he trying to get – so let, help me understand. Is he trying to extract – midichlorians from baby yoda so he can put the four or get some of that the powers is that what the overall plan is like what is this plan so <laughs> from what i've seen it seems more like they're trying to create clones of the emperor using the midichlorian stuff um i think the bigger question that we're going to find out at the end of the season is who this volunteer is because they have another person that is giving midichlorian blood or taking midichlorian blood and testing it within his body um we also don't even know if moff tarkin is following uh grand admiral thrawn or if they are working to be competing warlords reviving the empire mm -hmm. in different ways so i mean to me i want to see what all the connections are i want to see you know if that's something that's going on or possibly who this uh, volunteer is. That's my biggest question. Bunny, yeah, what do you think? See. We want to know who the volunteer is. I mean, it's this episode um, and the one before, and, and the, epi the chapter before this one as well, it begs that question. We got to find out why that lab was there. You know, that, that is, that's going to be the missing link. Bravo's absolutely right about it. If you, if you, if you want to get to the root of it, we need to put, put the pieces together. Bunny, you need to somehow try out for that show because you could be like her stunt double. Uh, you definitely look like a tree leg. I'll be kicking know? ass. <laughs> oh, and that's you do in real life too. It's like, no, she really can kick your ass just to let you know. And bro, did Bunny, you guys I would love to see you kick ass, uh, kick the dark troopers' asses. Absolutely. I could see you doing it. <laughs> Why the dark troopers, Bravo? That's my, there you go again. I can to be the white storm trooper. Now, now, Darnell, now, now. We do know. We do know. Bravo, in the mythos, that's the I thought we were cool. Okay. <laughs> Yo, did you guys hear how people are upset at uh, Rosario, the, uh, you know, Ahsoka's, her, uh, what do they call those things that hang from her back? They said they were too short. They said um, uh, the leak, they're called leakus or something like that. The long tentacles that come from the back of them, they're mm -hmm. complaining that, oh, they should be longer because she's older. And it's like, come on, now you guys are going too far. And um, I think Filoni actually addressed it and was like, well, it helped her to be more agile during the stunt scenes. Did you guys hear about that? Yeah, I, I think to me that's nitpicking a little bit. Like, I understand it's, it's not, you know, completely congruent. 
Um, to me, it's a, a suspension of disbelief uh, that I would afford them. Okay. Good way to put it. People just I like to it. complain. <laughs> I liked it. I have no complaints at all from top to bottom. I love the presentation, the art of Ahsoka. I feel very, I'm glad they weren't as long as they should or could be because like you guys said, it made it a little, a little more easy for her to be agile, but as well, it's like there are, there's magical realism in them. She's gone through a lot of loss. She's right. had to cut ties. She's gone through so much. So I think it mirrors kind of the sentiment of, of where she is at this right. chapter in the story. And she might have got a reduction surgery too. You know, sometimes <laughs> might have been taking her, making her back hurt. Sometimes, you know, in that galaxy, they definitely have some good surgery. There you go, right? <laughs> no, uh, for her to use that lightsabers, come on. Lumbar Take support, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't want her getting scoliosis, God forbid. <laughs> well, guys, uh, another great show. Bunny, again, just let us know what, you know, uh, any closing uh, promotions for your company. It sounds awesome. Oh, yes, Queens Gaming. You want to go to at Queens GG on all platforms. You want to check us out on YouTube. You want to check us out on Instagram. Join the Discord at Queens GG. We've got tremendous opportunities for everyone, not just women, but we're giving everybody an opportunity because it's anybody's game. So all rise for Queens GG. I'm Bunny Mike Game You at Bunny Mike Game You on PSN, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram. You name it. I'm here for you. <laughs> I love you, party nerds. Greens, beans, potatoes, tomatoes. Check your hand. <laughs> and also make sure you guys... <laughs> guys, party nerds, deuces. Oh, and bye, bravo. Bye, bravo. Bye, Jorge. <laughs> I love you guys.